know if I've shared this with the channel before, but I am a huge Pearl Jam fan. That being said, I am excited to talk about their 11th studio album, Gigaton, that just released. I've had some time to listen to it, I spent a little time with it, and I formulated my initial thoughts, so I thought it would only be right to share those thoughts on the channel. Pearl Jam worked with producer Brendan O'Brien for a long time, and this time they're deciding to go a different direction and work with Josh Evans, who's previously done a lot of work with Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. So what do we think of the first Pearl Jam record in seven years, the last one being Lightning Bolt? Well, let's just dive in. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you'd like this video, hit the red subscribe button, and turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss out on any weekly videos I put out. Whoever said is the opening track. I love a good Pearl Jam opener. You never really know what exactly you're gonna get. What's interesting is much like the song Go from the album Verses, it has this kind of false start where you have a sonic palette that changes up abruptly and begins the actual sound of the song. I kind of like that. I almost feel like it's a throwback. This is a super catchy yet deceptively complex, seemingly straightforward rock song. It's a great song to start the album on. It almost feels like it could have lived on Backspacer, and there's some really good mic guitar parts sprinkled in. Moving on from there is the second song they released prior to the album coming out, Super Blood Wolf Moon. This is another straightforward rocker that's definitely gonna rip live, so I hope I get the chance to see it. It's goofy, it's fun, it's upbeat, it's Pearl Jam doing what they do best. Also feels like it could have been on Backspacer, but that's not a bad thing. I'm one of the people that actually likes Backspacer. Cameron holds it down on the drums, and about three-fourths of the way through, there's an excellent McCready solo. And then, the third track is Dance of of the clairvoyance. This was the first track that Pearl Jam released when it came to this album, and it sounded like nothing the band has ever done before. It is them wearing talking heads on this sleeve, David Bowie on this sleeve, and giving it their absolute best, and honestly, it works. I love this track. It's funky, it's new wavy, it's something different from the band, which is something we actually needed after a little bit of staleness maybe on the last two albums where there wasn't a lot of experimentation compared to this in particular. And again, that's not really a slight about Lightning Bolt or Backspacer, I love both those albums. Eddie yells and croons over this moody instrumental that changes up multiple times throughout the song. And I noticed a lot of people talking about Matt Cameron saying he sounded like a drum machine. Well, you know what? Because he is a drum machine! I think he sounds great on this track, and his tight, technical slaps help ground this super floaty, heady track. And then it follows up with Quick Escape, which is the grungiest Pearl Jam has sounded in a while. It has a hint of their modern, evolved art rock sound, as well as their early PJ vibes. I love this Alice in Chains-esque howling that happens during this track. Also, there's a theme of this album thus far, and it's McCready just wailing, beating the crap out of his guitar, and I love it. This is a cool song about leaving Earth to find life on Mars because our leadership has destroyed Earth. I'd say it's a little political, but Pearl Jam is known to be political, so let's go on and see how much more of that there is throughout this record. Super strong track, conceptually and musically. Now the album takes a little turn, I think for the interesting, with All Right. All Right bursts open like it's almost a down-tempo electronic track that Thievery Corporation would have put out. Of course, with Eddie's vocals earnestly on top. This is an extremely unique sounding track for the band, which adds a much needed texture to what they've already given us so far. It almost has a Middle Eastern feel to it, and honestly, I understand that because Jeff wrote this song, and Jeff has a band from many years ago called Three Fish, which kind of had a similar vibe to it, so I think he might be pulling from that era a little bit inspirationally. And then we have Seven O'Clock, the track that's pretty much smack dab in the middle of the album. It continues this trend from the last song that has this kind of trip hoppy, syrupy music that plays behind Eddie's amazing vocals. This is the most overtly political song on the album, and if you listen to it, I don't really need to dive into exactly what it says, you'll figure it out right away. Rather than despair, it focuses on hope and activism, which I really appreciated. You could be really angry, and justifiably so, but I like that this is taking it from a lens of let's work together, not let's hate what's happening. It's a really strong track for the midway points, a solid, melodic ballad. Pearl Jam does it best, and they're doing it well on this track. Following up, we have Never Destination. This kind of falls in the camp of the first two tracks, a straightforward, rocky song. Pretty catchy. The more I listen to it, the more I like it. Everyone in the band kind of do what they do best. No one's really stepping on each other's toes. Really straightforward. It's middle of the road in terms of their discography, but it's a solid rock song. And then apparently Matt Cameron wrote the next song, Take the Long Way. I always take the long road that leads me back to you are the lyrics that make up the incredibly catchy chorus. Another straightforward rocker with some really good backing vocals and a really good solo towards the end. This song reminds me a bit of Thin Lizzy at times, which is a really cool thing that I never really compared Pearl Jam to before, but now I'm just gonna start to see some of that in their previous work. And then we have the weirdest song on the album, Buckle Up. Uh, I don't dislike this song, but it definitely is out of place 
in conjunction with the rest of the songs they gave us. What starts interestingly devolves into something that feels almost like a lullaby or a children's song. Remember that song, Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca? That's kind of what it reminds me of, which is very weird to hear from program. It doesn't really fit on the album. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. And then we have possibly my favorite track on the album, Comes Then Goes. It starts off with a country twang and has amazing harmonic vocals. A nice, solid, driving acoustic track. It actually gives me some Mad Season vibes, which is a nice thing that I haven't felt from PJ in a long time. It's the second longest track on the album, next to 7 O'Clock, and I think lyrically, this song could be their loose tribute to Chris Cornell. I'm not sure. I have to listen a little more, maybe hear what some other people have to say about it. And the song ends with this whispering wind that leads directly into the beginning of the next song, Retrograde. There's some Let Me Sleep inspired guitar on this track, which I thought was a cool throwback intentionally or not. And then some awesome keyboards and synths while Eddie kind of brings it all together as he always does. The ending of this song actually has one of the most jaw-dropping, beautiful moments on the album where Eddie's vocals kind of drift backwards, fading into the ether while all the instruments kind of swirl around it to build this beautiful, ethereal sound. I, I love it. It's definitely a top three moment on the album for me. And the final track, uh, Pearl Jam knows how to do their closers, is River Cross, a song that Eddie has played a couple times live in his solo shows, but now he gets the full band treatment. It's a beautiful, organ-heavy ballad that Eddie really punches you in the gut with. It's heavy, it's beautiful, and it's a fitting end to an incredibly lyrically dense album. Pearl Jam released their first album in seven years, and it is quite good, especially when compared to the sad, modern landscape of rock and roll music, which doesn't really exist unless you add the subgenres of folk or electro or metal to it. They continue their streak of being unable to release a bad album, and while it misses some of the really heavy grit and grunge that maybe they've been known for on previous tracks or albums in full, it still shows they have a lot to say musically and lyrically. In moments throughout the album, it feels like they're treading some uncharted ground, but ultimately there's moments of that combined with what they do best. While this album could have been viciously and hopelessly political, I love the way that they incorporated the way they feel in a way that feels enjoyable to listen to. Discontent with the government and fears of environmental damage are prevalent if you dig into the lyrics, but they're wrapped up in this beautiful poetry, as well as a call to arms to work together for our future rather than be angry about it. Musically, sadly, there's nothing on this album that really truly blew my mind. Maybe, maybe the end of Retrograde. And on a couple listens, I feel like I have to say there isn't anything on this record that can stand up with the best of the best that they've ever released, but that's a pretty high bar to set. As a consistent album, it is very strong, and I have little to complain about, especially for a band that's 11 albums in and 30 years down the road. If you're one of the fans that disregards everything after Vitology, you might not be a fan of what they're dishing out, but if you're like me, someone that's really enjoyed seeing the evolution of them as not just a grunge rock band, but as a beautiful art rock band, you might be surprised. It's a dense record with a lot going on, especially lyrically, and I really think this one's going to reward the patient Pearl Jam fan with future listens. On just my first few listens, I'm comfortable giving this album an 8 out of 10. It does what I wanted it to, and it doesn't quite blow me away yet, but I really do think the more I spend with it, the higher it's going to rank. It's an incredibly impressive output from a band this late in their career. I want to know what you think of this album, so please leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your favorite songs, your least favorite songs. It's extremely exciting and rare to get a new Pearl Jam album, so let's talk about it. Hope you guys like this video. If you want more, there's more coming, so make sure you're subscribed, and we'll chat soon. Take it easy.